are in the form of the symbolic communication that allow us to organize, express, and critically analyze our experience. It shape our mean uh, understanding of reality and of ourselves. Yeah, we can say that short or thinking, yes, and language create our world and <clears throat> yes, and so to think critically about the world, we must pay careful, yes, attention to word that the word we choose and the word other use. In this chapter, we yeah, we will focus on the skill of choosing the right word, defining word and I and um, identifying the emotive and stand message some word carry. So the first one, we go on to finding the right word, the need for prediction. Okay, yes, of course, a failure to be the precise in communicating can result in the confusion and misunderstanding. What make a perfectly uh, good sense to one person might be confusing, uh, confusing to someone else. Like, uh, for example, when we uh, tell someone like, uh, my father is a painter. Yes, but uh, does your father paint house or condes? Yeah, to make sure that what you told another is specific and make them understand yeah understand perfectly like that okay yeah so uh, all right um thinking yes uh thinking the critically and arguing uh effectively often depend on recognizing sister, sister oh wait please uh, move the slide Already, right? You see my slide? It's not moving. Yeah, chapter four. Doesn't move. Um, it's not moving. Well, still in chapter four language. It's still on the slide number three. Okay, let me share again. My slide. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. So yes, you can one, continue. Yes. Yes. All right. Um. Well. Like. Yes. Thinking. Uh. Like thinking critically and arguing effectively often depend on the recognizing. Imprecise language uh, affect us. Uh, first one is weakness. Like second one, over generality, and last one, ambiguity. So the first one is weakness. Uh, weakness is a kind of uh impression in language. Yes. Um. Weakness is a word or a group of word that is meaning is first uh, blurry, uh, blurry uh, or inexact. It mean a uh, kind of meaning, mean like a uh, lack precise information. For example, when you say a student must come early, so the student will consider like what early. It mean late or early. What the what the exactly time that mean early. So you should uh, provide them more information. What time that uh, they should arrive school? That mean early. Or you can say a student must be in class three minutes before the actual time of class. So the student will understand, oh, they should uh, uh, arrive school before three minutes. Like that, it means uh, early that they can, uh, they can uh, prepare time to arrive at school like that. Okay, and the next one here, uh, my member will explain you about the over.
word generality. Okay, let's start. Yes. Um. So I'm Sophia. I'm gonna present about the uh, over generality. Uh. So next slide, please. I can't see the slide. Move. Why? It's move already. I don't know. Oh, you can uh, click on the preview. Uh, yeah, so um, you cannot see uh, the slide. Move to the next slide. I think the person who say and know that. Uh... Okay, I can see it. Okay. Uh, yeah, so um, in the critical thinking, over generality is uh, uh, when a word or express provide the information that too broad and unspecific. And over, general, uh, over generality is a statement that uh, provides too much information to be useful, but it uh, easily to get confused. Um, for example, like um, uh, teacher talk to students like, um, Today we will talk about the Cambodia problem, but uh, it's too broad. Like, uh, what kind of problem is that? Uh, is it uh, the environmental uh, problem or traffic problem, or like that? And uh, next slide, please. Yes. And uh, the next point is the ambiguity. So ambiguity is um, referred to the doubtful sense of word or phrase. Uh, that has more than one meaning. For example, in the slide, uh, for example, in the slide is that um, a teacher will be made. So the made here have a lot of uh, meaning. So it might be um, angry or incensed or very surprised. So uh, what does this made refer to? Yes. And uh, in ambiguities, uh, divide into two. The next slide, please. Yes, uh, the first one is the uh, somatic uh, ambiguities that it exists when a word from the call uh, respond to more than one meanings and as in the English word it called uh, organ um, for the biblical speaker, uh, it is not a uh, ambiguity. Ambiguity may arise when a word form is say across language, but the meaning are different. So it focuses about word more than the sentence. Uh, like a simple, uh, like the example in the slide is that uh, Mikey is sold out. So uh, sold out here it also has the different meaning. Like a um, she sold her stock out, <coughs> or um, she she was. Uh, like a uh, betrayed by someone uh, for their own benefit, so it have um, many uh, meaning here. And another one uh, about the ambiguity is the uh, syntactic syntactic ambiguity. So it also called uh, the structural ambiguity. So it means that it focus on the structure. That is the uh, situations where a sentence may be interrupt in. Um, in sorry, interpret in more than one way uh, due to um, ambiguous sentence structure and this ambiguity are from uh, not from the range of meaning of the single word but it from the relationship uh, between the word and the clause of the sentence uh, and the sentence structure underlying the word order therein. So, in one word, a sentence uh, is the uh, syntactically um, ambiguous when a reader or listener can uh, reason reasonably interpret one sentence as having more than uh, one possible structure. Uh, for example, uh, in the slide, they say that. Um, I saw an elephant in my pajama. So it means that is that he saw an um, elephant while he was uh, wearing pajamas, or he saw that elephant that uh, it was in his pajama. So uh, it has these two meanings. So um, it's not clear. So the listener can interpret it in uh, more than two ways. So that's called a syntactic 
ambiguity. Yes, uh, that's all for my point. Uh, let's move to the next presenter. Hello, lecturer, and hello, everyone. My name is Nika, and I'm responsible for the part two, the importance of uh, precise definitions. So you can read this, uh, read my slide as well. And I would like to uh, describe more about the importance of uh, precise, uh, precise definitions. So the importance of a uh, precise definition is when we talk to others. Yeah, it allows us to access a uh, situation better. It means that you have a uh, more meaningful conversations and make the better decisions. Yes, um, it's create a value between um, its intent purpose of describing something effectively. And like uh, if you talk to others without a precise definition, it's make uh, to it's make it difficult to agree on what we are talking about, and our conversation will end up with uh, circling around and going nowhere. So, and um, about type of um, precise definition, we have divided into four, uh, four points. The first point is about stipul uh, stipulative definitions. The second point is about persuasive definition. The third point is about uh, lexical definition. And the last point is about uh, precising definitions. So please move the slide. Yes. Um, I start with the first point is uh, stipulative definitions. Uh, this point is the kind of definition that we can use or create a new word or use an old word in an entire new way that you tell your reader and listener what you mean by this term. Like example, uh, the word selfie. So selfie, when you when you hear the word selfie, it means that you can understand it immediately like um, the people who like to take photo for him or herself like that even it it has no in dictionary but when you hear the word selfie it means that you understand it immediately okay and move to number two uh, about persuasive uh, definitions so at uh, this point uh, support to describe the true or commonly accepted meaning of a of a term. It's usually support on um, acumen for some use, such as uh, to uh, create or authorize duty or crimes. And about persuasive uh, definition, focus on the expressive use of language to affect the feeling of reader and listener uh, uh, with an aim to change their behavior. For example, like uh, the word, I choose the word democracy. So when you hear democracy, uh, some some people may think uh, refer to a country that that is free like that, and some uh, people might be think uh, it's a government of people by people for people like that. So um, this point it means that um, one one word, but uh, you can um, think different way. Okay, and move to number three is uh, lexical definitions, and this. This point is a definition of a word according to the meaning uh, customarily assigned to it by community of user. It means that it's it's an old word, like um, it 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 is uh, described in the dictionary. Example, like when you hear the word river, so uh, when you can see the word river, it it um it means that refer to a large of uh, water or channel like that so uh about this point is um we talk about uh, dictionary words and the last point is about uh, uh precising uh, definitions uh, this point uh, we uh, used to reduce the vagueness of a word so there are terms in our language which must have a uh, a precise definition because some future actions are based on our knowledge of them. Like, um, example, the word, like, uh, we have known about the different difference between the word nurse and doctor. It means that uh, nurse and doctor both they work in the hospital, but um, when you talk about nurse, uh, you can understand about their uh, duty in the hospital. And about doctor, we have a different um, duty. So uh, this point about precising definition, it refer to the words like um, refer to a difference of word. Even they are in the same group, but. Um, like uh, we have different meaning. So that's all from my point. Please move to the next presenter. Thank you.
Good evening, teacher, and good evening, classmates. My name is Hong Kong Ho. I am responsible for this point strategies for listening. Uh, so, uh, strategies for listening by three, uh, three points. The first skill is illustration. Uh, yeah, uh, def define a term by providing a sample of what the word refer to. So, for example, to help someone understand the meaning of football player. So, uh, you might list some members football players, such as Christian no Ronaldo or Messi uh, And if you want to define a uh, river, define river, you could mention the Neil, Mississippi, Mekong, and so on. And the strategy number two, uh, you dictionary. Dictionary tell what part of speak a word is, how it is commonly pronounced, and where the word come from. Dictionary are best consider history books that describe the way word were used when the dictionary was written rather than prescribe how we should define a word. Um, consider the best di dictionary in English. The offered dictionary overcomes many of the senses inherent in dictionaries by providing extensive definition and a support of a word to use through our history. And the third point, the, first, the third strategy, provide a synonym. A synonym are words that have the same meaning or nearly the same meaning as the term being defined. So, uh, for example, in English language, uh, the word start, begin, and commence are all synonym of one other. They are synonymous. Uh, most like For this part, uh, talking about rules for constructing good physical definition, uh, we have seven points. The first, talk about uh, the make the definition too broad or too narrow. Uh, a definition is too broad if it includes too much and is too narrow if it includes too little. So a good definition applies to all and only the thing being defined. A definition of uh, yeah, automobile as a vehicle with four wheels so it would be too broad because it it would include gold cars and loan wonders uh monvers. So uh, a defining a definition of sibling as brother would be too narrow because it fails to include sister. So, uh, Point number two, convey the essential meaning of the word being defined. A good definition uh, should do more than just pick out some uniquely identifying the properties of the thing being defined. 
defending horse for some part as the animal animal uh, written by uh, Napoleon during the Battle of Waterloo is clearly a poor definition even though the defining expression does apply uniquely to horse. Um, number three, the why a contempt for ambiguous word. So many words are ambiguous. That is, they have two or more distinct meaning. For example, a walk in baseball is different from a walk in the park. In the park, yes. Uh, to prevent confusion, therefore, a good definition should indicate the context in which an ambiguous word is being used. Thus, we might say walk means in baseball, an award of first best to the better who receive for pitch balls that are outside the strike zone and are all swung at by the better. Uh, number four. A what slanted definition? Uh, don't let personal reference and or attitude inter interfer with your definition. Uh, a what slanted definition that is based or emotionally chained definition that improperly play on the emotion or attitude of an audience. Slanted definition may be okay for a life, for a life. As in Woodrow Wilson's famous definition of a conservative as a man who sits and things mostly sit, but don't try to win a debate by a definition that can rightly be won only by an argument. And the next point, uh, or what figurative definition. A good definition should express clearly conventional meaning of a word, not be caught in figurative or metaphorical language. Consider this example. A slot machine means one arm bandit. Advertising means legalized lying. Uh, religion means the flex of the alone to the alone. Yes, uh, the second a white needlessly obscure definition. A good definition should clarify the meaning of a word for someone who may be unfamiliar with the term. Thus, definition should not include a lot of big words or technical jargon that readers are likely 
way to understand. For example, mouse mean a quadrupedal, mamma, mammalian, or any other more diminutive or especially all the genus must of the other robotian robotian for people not trained in biology this definition is likely to be more confusing than careful the last point of what sexual definition a uh, definition is sexual if a person would need to know what the defined word mean in order to understand the word or words used or word used to need it uh, for example uh, when you talk uh, to someone, uh, you ask, uh, the first time you ask, uh, hey or see, uh, where are you going? And then, uh, a few minutes, you ask his or her then, where are you going? So, it is make the uh, make uh, his or her uh, maybe uh, stop with it. We, uh, we say it again and again to her or his. Yes, that's all my parts. Thank you. And my classmate again. My name is Ngon Sita. My point is emotive language, stretching the toes. Uh, what is emotive language? Emotive language is the trend, is the term used when a certain word choice are made to involve an emotional response from the reader. Emotive language often aim to the person, the reader or listener to share the writer or speaker point of view. Using language to the simulate an emotional reaction. And for example, it's important put that in the recycle bin. Uh, this intent is not emotive. It is a command, but it does not cause an emotional e reaction. And for the it's important to you should recycle because it sells the planet. Uh, this intent is emotive. It suggests an action that Iliad and the emotional response. Don't you want to sell the planet? How could you choose to not recycle since it sells the planet? The emotional response causes a reaction or a response. How can emotional language spread the trust? In many ways, when you are the emotionally charged, you try to the it just everything to make yourself to to be believed, you you may also say things you don't mean. When you are angry to somebody, such as like when making love to somebody, you say they are the, the best. When they not because you you are first of the emotion. Go to us the slides. And for the emotional power of words. The emotive power of a word can come from the words, demotation, or the list a literal meanings. If someone tell you that a child was a patch, you might find yourself move to the uh disgust oh, or even action or hearing a word that mean hit uh for fully with the cross. But emotive meaning also come from the words connect the image, the feeling that are the associate with the word. Uh, that's all of my point. Okay, I'm um, good evening.
doing a game teacher and classmates. So I'm um, responding for the last point is about euphemism and political correctness. So the word euphemism is a polite word or expression that is used to refer a to things which people may find upsetting or embarrassing to talk about, for example, like um, human body or death. Um, as you can see, an example, um, but before going to example, let me clarify it into the simple word. Um, I think this is the other way that you can say something to someone because some word, when you go too straight to them, they will might just like offense them or something. So there are many ways that you can use instead of that. Um, you can see an um, example here. So, example, instead of saying someone has died, you might say his time was up, or he passed away, or he went to sleep, or he expired at 10 p.m. Or, um, I would like to add some more example, just like when you know someone and one of his or her relative is dead. So, you shouldn't just go and say to them like, oh, I'm so sorry, your uncle died. It's just an example. So instead you can say like, I'm um, so sorry for your loss or um, may his soul rest in peace. All right, so, um, something like that. And I would like to add something more. So when you see the old person, you shouldn't say, oh, that's the old man or the old woman. You should you should like say um, the senior citizen or when someone is overweight, you shouldn't say that she or he is dead. You should use like um, um, she is or he is chubby instead. Also, so that please move to the next slide. So the next slide is about political correctness. Political correctness or we can say PC in short means using word or behavior which um, will not offend any other group of people. Uh, most people think it is most important for everyone to be feeling. Like for example, um, in the public place, like for example in a group of friends, we have five or ten or even more people around. So you can see like a guy that he, he acts like like the girl, so you shouldn't call him gay or something. You should like um, respect his privacy, and that is not appropriate to say that stuff to people in the public place because it might offense them or make them embarrassed. Um, so that's all. Let me um, summary again. So, um, all right. So. Um, that's all for our presentation today for group one. Um, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask. And thank you, teacher, and thank everyone for listening. Um, do you have any questions? Please feel free to ask. Yeah, um, I can see that it's uh, very nice that um, you try to do presentation. Um, I would also say sorry that my internet really interrupting and I cannot really engage much for the starting point of the presentation and earlier and waste some of your minutes because of this. And even though it's uh, somehow I, I listen to like almost the last part of your presentation, I just want the class to really share your idea, what you understand about the language and why language is important in critical judgment, or we can say critical thinking, because you need to evaluate claim or argument based on the language that individual people speak. And when, when people speak, some of the wakes or over general city, um, you might know that you are not able to really get their detail or clear information and you are um, curious and want to know more. And you may say that that argument is bad or not acceptable or some kind like that.
get not cancelled or not um, valid some kind like that. So based on this group presentation, maybe I want you to share um, your understanding based on group presentation as well as ask the question. But maybe I have one question first. I want you to explain a little bit about euphemism. Why euphemism is important in um, why euphemism is important in the language that related to critical judgment. One thing, and the second thing is that why emotive language is also uh, part of. Uh, the study in the language for critical thinking. Thank you. Um, all right, thank you for the question, teacher. So I am the one who is responding about euphemism, and your question is why euphemism is important, right, teacher? Yes, yes. Okay, so um, I would like to answer this question by this. Um, euphemism is important because it's a very, it's, it's the way that you can learn how that you can use your word. Because if you just say something without using your critical thinking skill or um, without thinking about other people's feeling, maybe you can offense them at some point, even without purpose, but they will um, be offended and they will become like unhappy about your words and also sometimes you can make somebody embarrassing like in front of people so um, this is the great way to learn from euphemism because we know we all know that what can kill people inside so we have to be careful we have to be very careful when we speak um that's all to share and if my teammate want to add some point please go ahead Yeah, how about others? And maybe you can answer the second question then. Hello? Yeah, yeah, teacher. Okay. Uh, for me, I have no more, but I just uh, add more, uh, a, li a little bit more about the question. Uh, this one is also can help us to yeah to um like be careful before we talk to someone or say something to someone like uh if we just to say it uh, sometimes it affect to other feeling like that we have to think beforehand like that it's just my uh opinion for the question oh. I don't really understand your answer for the second questions, my second questions. Yeah, I don't really understand that. Anyone, maybe even the person who don't um, do presentation can share your understanding based on my question if you like to. No? Can you ask again? Okay, no one, right? Okay, yeah, yeah, set that up, please, if you like to. Yeah, I just find out like the word. I I cannot hear you clearly. I cannot hear you clearly. Can you speak loudly? Yeah, now I hear, but still not clear. Okay, teacher, because that I'm on the way, uh, go to the okay, okay. I, I just okay. use the mic from the car. So, yeah, at the first, I would like to say thank you for our team that do presentation today. Okay. Yeah, uh, it's a nice presentation, and thank you, teacher, for the question. But for my viewer point of this, uh, uh, euphemism. Euphemism. Yeah, is a word that, like, we need if, if we want to show other people like okay if we speak uh, if you some word like uh, so hard so yeah and uh, so strong and so uh so deep for other people to understand like we are the political of all and then uh, we want to 
to say something, we need to use a, a one or some some word like easy word for other people easy to understand. I mean, I it's not too uh, hard to understand. Yeah, and also it's a meeting tool for them to understand. By the way, one another thing is like uh, we need to use the word like do not hurt other people like 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 she, like our teacher like. We cannot use like if we saw that guy, we notice that he, uh, he is a gay, so we cannot say in front of them like I, uh, uh, he is a gay, you are a gay like that. We, 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 we might use another word like uh, just uh, notice that uh, he, he is a gay like that. And even though like we want to scold other people or want to complain other people, we cannot use like uh, the bad word uh, them just like use another word like compare or or, or or tell them about what that they they did wrong yeah just like that teacher what that i speak uh, what that i understand thank you so much yeah thank you thank you yes yeah that is also another point somebody else you want to share yeah somebody else you want to share Hello. Hello, somebody else you want to share? No. Hello? 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 No, no, no. Yeah, no other question, right? Common, right? Bà xong nè na khơi mà lá còn lớn đây vậy đang một lần lên mà lá mà lá you want to say something mà lá you want to say something hello mà lá do you want to say something Hello, teacher. Yeah, please. Okay, okay. So yeah, maybe um, you can say uh, uh, even even stream out is not here, but since you are a member you can also share um, based on what Srima has said. It's also helpful for your friends. Yeah, as a team, you work as a team, please. Can you help share more? Um I'm I'm contacting her chum. Oh, my. Yeah. yeah, because uh, I'm not responding to this point, so I'm not, I'm not really clear. Okay, thank you. No need then. 
I just want to say something. Thank you. The Sape Lien Clay Clay Yen Kajol the session not say love him chong yay tick or kun. Chang chip bar be saw uh the sat na yung mean nika mean a chang hai kni yung an arch like ma yung chang cho room but yet the time ta uh สมาชิกกรมในក្នុងក្រមមួយមួយខ្ញុំសំលឹកទឹកចិត្តឲ្យពីផ្សាយសមាជិកក្រមទាំងអស់ត្រូវចេះមកមេរៀននឹងទាំ
Bye, 